Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drives, where we are finally embarking on another road trip today in the 2023 Lexus ES300 Hybrid. Kind of my perfect idea of a road trip car, because of course I like Lexuses for their comfort and soft interior materials, and while well, the ES is kind of just the gold standard for a front wheel drive sort of mid-size sedan, and this one's a hybrid, so it should be quite efficient as well. This one is specced a little bit differently than I would personally spec it because it is the F-Sport handling, which means we get Lexus F-Sport tuned dampers, we get some black wheels, we get different seats, we get a different steering wheel, we get paddle shifters, all sorts of sporty things that you don't necessarily need for a road trip. So for the most part, with this just being baseline Alexis ES300 hybrid, it should be quite nice, but uh, we'll have to see and kind of evaluate how these F-Sport tuned dampers do for long distance driving. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if this is still a usable package, if you want some different looks and you want to be able to take some corners on your way home from work or whatever. I don't know who actually uh, uses Lexus ESs for performance driving, but hey, if you want to, you have the option. So overall, this generation of ES has been out for a few years at this point, and they just added a new infotainment and some other things. So we have a pretty nice suite on the inside of this car. Up front, we have the same 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid powertrain that you get in pretty much every Toyota or Lexus hybrid that isn't the new hybrid max. So we've got a pretty old and robust powertrain under the hood, and let's go ahead and take a look at it. It makes 215 horsepower, and in this car, power is sent to the front wheels via a CVT. So this is very sort of traditional old school Toyota hybrid, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because, as we know, these things just go forever. And, well, I mean, I don't see why this one wouldn't do the same. Pretty simple layout here. We've got a nice little beauty cover with a Lexus badge on it, but underneath it is all Toyota, of course. Okay, so let's check out some road trip essentials. What if you are taking some passengers with you? How is rear seat leg room? Let's hop in the back seat and find out. I have a couple of things back here. Oh, I didn't actually talk about where I'm going. So if you've watched all these road trip videos, you will know that my buddy Sean down in Peoria, Illinois likes to kind of summon me down to film some cars every now and then. So I'm driving six hours down to Peoria and then tomorrow I'll be driving six hours back up. So it's gonna be a 12 hour round trip here in this Lexus ES300 hybrid. So we will be able to fully evaluate the road trip performance of this car. This one has a very bright white interior, but we've got some nice black accents in here too. And uh, well, just as I suspected, plenty of room here in the back seat I've got. A ton of room set behind myself. I'm five foot 11. And as far as amenities go, we've got some cup holders, we've got some charge ports down here, we've got like the traditional car charger style, a couple USB-Cs. surprising to me that Lexus is kind of switching over to all USB-Cs. There's only one USB-A port in this car and it's up front. All the rest are USB-Cs. Black headliner, sunroof. Let's go ahead and check the trunk to see your luggage situation here. This is kind of silly, this has a power trunk, <laughs> which... This is a tiny little trunk, so anyways, uh, tiny as far as the trunk lid goes, but the actual trunk space is good. It's a very wide opening. You'd never imagine why they make it so wide here at the end. Um, you could only imagine maybe the golf enthusiasts in Florida that mostly drive ES300 hybrids have something to do with it. First aid kit over there, and you can see I've got a couple of backpacks in here for scale, so you can kind of judge the size off of that, but I don't see why you couldn't fit two very large suitcases or three or four small day bags in here. Um, it would be no problem at all, as well as a long extremity right here if you are one of those people that likes to do so. This car is finished in iridium silver, and I'm not even gonna complain about that because the ES is such a just businessman's express or Florida man's express, I suppose, that uh, I don't think it looks bad at all. And Lexus does a good job with their silver, iridium silver with the black wheels, the F-Sport bits. Um, I think it complements this car quite well. Let's hop up front and see what we have going on up here. It's such an attractive interior in this car. Lexus really stepped it up with the ES with this latest generation. And um, honestly, these seats would be one of the reasons I would be kind of skewed towards getting the F-Sport, but otherwise I would probably just go for 
a base model or a, a basic comfort ish spec car. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I have like some brain fog. I was sick last week, as I'm sure you guys can tell uh, from my voice. So if something doesn't make sense, then that'll explain why. Let's hop in. F Sport ES on the floor mats. Nice. Lots of just nice detailing on the door panels, the dashboard. I've got a white console lid, which I have full of things right now. I got my breakfast in there. Even though it's 11, I wanted to leave at like 9, but that didn't happen today. So we're just kind of rolling with the punches as we go. Let's take a look at the Monroney and uh, see what we got. Well, the base price on the ES300H F Sport handling is $48,835. This one has a few options, most notably the 12.3 inch infotainment screen with destination and all the other tiny things that brings our total price to $54,255. So it's a little bit pricey, but uh, I'm thinking about, we had a Toyota Crown a couple weeks ago and it was only like four grand less. So for a little bit more, you get a car that is objectively nicer. All right, let's put the Monroney away and let's start this thing up. Okay, we have a physical climate control panel in here still, which is nice, and a cool little animation when the numbers move. Fun, okay. You can see we have wireless Apple CarPlay. That is beauteous. The Lexus IS I was driving last week did not have wireless Apple CarPlay because that car is a little bit behind still. And we have Lexus's and Toyota's new infotainment, which is fabulous. It's simple, it's brilliant, and I just, this is one of my favorite infotainments on the market. But obviously today we're just going to be living in Apple CarPlay because we're going to go on Waze and we'll put in our destination. I'm thinking it's going to be about six hours it's going to take me to get there. So looking forward to that. And we'll also reset our trip computer to see what sort of fuel economy we get on today's test. And I'm curious what EPA is on this on the highway. 44 on the highway, 43 city. Okay, so we'll be looking for 44 MPG when we hit the highway we'll see if we're able to match that usually hybrids don't in my experience of driving 50 million thousand of these cars is usually hybrid cars get slightly below their epa estimated highway range because epa tests at slower speeds uh, but generally traditional ice cars actually exceed their epa rating so kind of a weird thing but it makes sense because hybrids just do better at low speeds because they're able to use the electric motor more. But if we're able to get 44 MPG, that will be fantastic. Pretty traditional shifter here. We've got heated cooled seats, heated steering wheel. We've got a power adjust steering column, which is fantastic. We've got LFA inspired uh, drive mode selector up here, as well as our switch for traction control. So I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's a nice car. There's nothing really incredibly special about the Lexus ES, but that's not the point of this car. It's just supposed to be a nice, businessman's cocoon here and that's kind of uh well that's kind of the vibe that i'm getting so far so why don't we hit the road we're going to go fill up with some petrol and i'm actually curious to see if this takes premium i doubt it does because it's just a 2.5 liter hybrid so i can't imagine this needing to take premium but if it does then we'll fill it up with premium if not we'll dump some 87 in it and uh we'll be on our way driving dynamics wise this car drives great honestly as you can see, I've used half a tank this week. I've been driving this car most of the week. Besides yesterday, I was driving an AMG GLE 63S, which was nuts. You guys will see that on the Topher channel. Um, but uh, otherwise, I've been driving this, and I've actually taken it on a couple of long journeys. I took it out to Rochester Hills, which is about an hour and a half drive from here. And uh, I took it out to Livonia yesterday to do some photos for Bring a Trailer at Vintique Motors. And it's just been a nice ride. And you even have lumbar support on these F-Sport seats, which is a nice thing as well. You can support your back if you are cruising on the highway. Steering feel is light and it's sort of silky. Lexus is in this class, like the ES, the LS, they all have this kind of silky steering feel and it's pretty nice for relaxed driving style. <laughs> we have paddle shifters uh, that are included in the F-Sport package, but this is a CBT, so I have not used them. The only thing that they really do is they're able to downshift for you and kind of rev the car up, but the upshift usually does not do anything. This also has the gauge cluster that moves. Look at this. Yes, this was shown first or introduced on, I think, the 2014 IS. If 
but now the ES has it too, so that's pretty neat. I love the moving gauge cluster. It's just something about the fact that it's like fully electronic except for just the little metal ring in the middle that moves over. This person is driving in the middle lane. Okay. Can you guys tell I'm congested? <clears throat> does that does that relay over the air? Also, sorry it's been like two weeks since I posted a video. I have been just slammed with travel and everything else. September has been absolutely nuts, so I'm excited to kind of just get back in the groove of things here. One nice thing about CVTs is that you're able to just get, get on with it. They're just ready to go from a low speed situation, which is nice for city driving. When you're around the city and you need to just kind of zip in and out, CVTs are nice for that. What's not nice is a dual clutch, which is what I was driving in the city last time when I went to Chicago. I had a BMW X1 and I had to put it in like Sport Plus to get it to have good enough throttle response for me to, to complete my city driving. And would it even be a Lexus if we didn't, next to our massive 12.3 inch infotainment screen, have a clock? That's classy. That's enjoyable. We've got a clock. We don't have a CD player, which is sad. They got rid of that finally. But there's enough physical in here. A little trapdoor for some USB uh, ports there. Okay, well, we are approaching the gas station, so we'll pull in there. We'll top this thing up with some petrol. And then we'll hit the highway and we'll get you guys some first highway driving impressions on the ES300 hybrid. Is there a thing about like you're not supposed to get fuel when the, that's ice in my cup rattling. You're not supposed to get fuel when the fuel truck is refueling the fuel. I don't know. This is the gas pump I went to last time actually when we were in the Z3 or Z4, I mean. All right, what do we think guys? Is it gonna require premium? If it says recommended, it's getting 87, because we're just driving on the highway. We don't need anything special, but it's probably not even gonna say recommended. We're just trying not to cloud the door on this thing. Why do they put these here? It's just in the way constantly. Ooh, okay. Ooh, I need to do, I need to do this. Okay. Let's see. Ah, nothing about requiring premium, so she's getting a full tank of 87. It took just over seven gallons, so it must have like a 14 gallon tank or so. How much was that? $27, not too bad. I'm gonna see if I can go the whole journey out on one tank of fuel. So let's go ahead and figure out how to reset. Oh man. So far we've been averaging 41.6 and I need to get out of the way actually because there's people waiting to get in here. I hate when people do this and now I'm just being the person doing it. Okay, uh, so, so far 41.6, we're gonna reset. Okay, we've got that reset and we shall see how we do on the road here. I've seen some conflicting things on that eco mode doesn't actually help you on the highway, because why would it? Because it's really just like a throttle response thing. So I'm probably just gonna leave the car in normal mode and just let it do its thing. And uh, we'll see how it does. We've got EV mode down here. We've got all of our other drive modes up top. I don't know, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to just kind of floating today in, in this ES300. One thing I wanna note though, actually, is this has the base sound system. We don't have Mark Levinson in here, but Lexus always does a really good job with their base sound systems. And so far, I've had quite a bit of time to listen to this one. It sounds pretty dang good. I'm like super impressed. Like if you would have told me this was a Mark Levinson, I would have believed you. Um, and judging off of the older Lexuses that I've had, I, I currently own an O3 IS300 and I had an O3 GS300 and they both have great sound systems. You, even with the cassette to aux, the GS300 sounded fantastic. There's a Topher video on that car if you guys want to go back and find it. It's a good one. Miss that car. And once again, I have set off without setting my navigation, but we're pulling up to a red light, so I will do that here. And uh, we'll see. Please. Cow and mayor. There we go. 
328, oh, three, 382 miles away, 5 hours and 37 minutes. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's feel this F-Sport handling. Maybe this is why. It's the only reason you get this is for entrance ramps. And then you just set your cruise control for 72 and drive normally. Yeah, it took that nicely. And honestly, say what you want about this 2.5 liter hybrid with 215 horsepower, but it's got plenty of torque to, to get you moving up to highway speeds without having to be stressed about getting crashed into when you're merging. We have radar cruise on this car. We have lane tracing assist. You can, oh, I don't, you probably can't see that on camera, but I am floating. So the F-Sport handling dampers are still doing their job just fine as far as comfort goes. So we don't have to worry about that. Even like NVH stuff, like it's pretty quiet in this cabin. I mean, granted we don't have massive wheels on the car and this is a pretty slippery aerodynamic design. So I wouldn't really expect anything less, but no guys it's looking like it's going to be a pretty good ride and another thing is the last lexus i road tripped was an is 500 f sport performance and the is it's a little bit smaller than this car of course but it's also set up differently in the front the dashboard comes out a little bit further and you have less room for your knee whereas in this car i can kind of put my knee up and, and have some room so it's something to consider when you're going long distances in these cars is you're gonna be moving your body in different ways and you're gonna have different fixed positions. Just work, okay. You're gonna have different fixed positions. So like if I have my right leg up while I'm using cruise control, then I need to have room for my knee here. Same on this side, you know, foot room, the footwell area is important. All of these things matter on road trips. So all of those things will be evaluated, but it's looking like it's gonna be pretty good. This ES is a good size for if you're going somewhere with one or two other people because you can of course use the back seat for extra stuff if you need or whatever else so quite good let's see how passing power is with the radar cruise we don't get to find out because the infinity qx80 is coming over one thing i have found with the toyota and lexus radar cruise systems is they are kind of nervous this is the closest following distance you can do which is fine i mean whatever but they sometimes when you're changing lanes and things they get a little bit nervous and sometimes they break in the middle of changing lanes which is perilous Hyundai's do that too radar cruise and adaptive cruise and everything it's just it's on the brink of being like really good but we have a couple of bugs that we need to work out for sure Oh, what about elbows? Elbows are another important thing for road trips. We've got a soft surface here on the door panel. Can I just say, Lexus does some of the softest leather out of anybody. And that goes for just, you know, rubbing your hand across it. You can feel that it's very soft, but it's also plushy. So it seems like my elbow comfort when I'm resting my uh, arms here like this, it seems like that should be okay as well. Cool, all right, well, uh, in hope to not bore you anymore with these subtle road trip impressions, I am going to get to eating up the miles here and I'll stick a time lapse on the windshield for you guys to watch. And we'll get you some impressions in a couple of hours once I've gotten to settle into the ES300 and we'll go from there. question is, will the lane tracing let you peel a banana, or will it get very cross with you? Oh, come on, accelerate. No, stay. Thank you. 
sitting at just about four hours behind the wheel of the ES300H F-Sport handling. And uh, it's honestly been just about as adequate as I was suspecting. Um, the F-Sport handling package, don't be scared of it because this thing floats along just like I would expect any Lexus ES to do. And I'm not really surprised that Lexus was able to kind of dial in these sport dampers to still ride quite nicely. So don't worry about that. It still rides just fine. Additionally, as I stated earlier, the base sound system is fabulous, actually. It's a very good option. Don't even really worry about getting the Mark Levinson in the Lexus ES because the base sound system gets the job done. So you can save some money there. Uh, otherwise, the seat, quite nice as well. I've had my lumbar out. You've got just um, an out and back lumbar. You can't move it up or down that I've been able to figure out and just kind of it's either out or in. So I've been messing with that. I didn't really get fatigued in the seat until like three and a half hours into the drive. My back started to need adjusting. So three and a half hours, you can sit in the car comfortably, or at least I can. I guess my back is different than yours. The only thing I will say that's been a little bit irritating is the lane tracing assist, which I did actually just turn back on because we're just in a very simple two-lane highway scenario now. But earlier, it was getting very confused and it was actually taking me off onto the shoulder into the other lane and forcefully as well. It's not like, you know, it's, it was just wandering. It was ripping the steering wheel out of my hands into the other lane. And I think it's because it was confused because there were some different kind of um, materials on the road that it was probably reading as lines. And So this lane tracing assist system is certainly not on par with some of the other manufacturers that have uh, similar lane centering and lane keep assist systems. It does an okay job, but I'm really not the biggest fan of it. I've kind of just been driving with it off. Let's talk about fuel economy. 42.8 mpg has been our average, and for the most part, we've been cruising 78, 79, 80, except for a couple of sections where we were in some construction, so that slowed us down a bit uh, to around 40 to 60 miles per hour. I would say an average speed, probably somewhere around 75, something like that. This will probably wrap up impressions for today. And I'll get back with you guys tomorrow once I'm on my way back. I'm going to spend a day at Cowthen Mayer in Peoria. We're doing uh, the Roundo, which is like a road rally that goes all around Peoria. So I'm um, going to do that tomorrow, and then I'm going to leave right after and go back because ending off my chaos week with the Topher, we're going to go out to the Midwest Motorsports Complex and drive his S2000 and Civic Type R. And then I'm in the process of selling my grandpa's Taurus SHO, which just went on cars and bids. Um, so thanks to all of you that participated in that. Anyways, we're getting off topic. I'm gonna continue driving. We'll do a bit more time lapse, and I will likely catch up with you guys tomorrow unless I have any sort of impressions that I wanna give you in the next hour and a half. Oh, and one last thing as I have six minutes to go, I wanna talk about range. So we filled up before we left. We've now got just over a quarter tank and we've gone about 380 miles. So this tells me that you could probably squeeze 600 miles out of a tank in this car. Being realistic, maybe 550. We're just going off of the fuel gauge, but final readout here, 43.2 MPG average. And that of course being only 0.8 below what EPA rates this thing on the highways? I mean, overall, just as an option in Lexus's lineup, this is pretty nice because it's something that you can run on more of a budget than you could some of their other cars. It takes regular fuel, it gets 43 MPG, but it still looks excellent. It's still a Lexus, it still rides nice. Despite this being a Toyota powertrain, this don't think it's just a Camry with leather seats. I mean, it does still have Lexus characteristics. So with that being said, it's looking like I would actually recommend the Lexus ES, and that's no big surprise because I always recommend older versions of this car to people when they ask, what car should I buy my high schooler? Well, you should buy them like a 2008 Lexus ES because it's just nice and luxurious and reliable. And that's the other thing is you can just buy this, drive it all over the country, change the oil, and that's it, the end. You just change the oil, put brakes on it, put tires on it and it will just literally go. It'll, it'll probably outlive you, honestly. I mean, if we're being honest here, Toyotas probably outlive their owners more than any other car. So that's that. I'm three minutes away from Cowthen Mayer. I'm gonna have my weekend here. And uh, well, I'll catch up with you guys soon once I'm on my way back, probably in golden hour lighting, I suspect.
Well guys, I'm just about 10 hours in total driving here in the 2023 Lexus ES300 Hybrid F Sport handling. And I think I've come to the verdict that this is the most comfortable car that I've road tripped so far here on Topher Drives. I'm the least fatigued out of anything else, the other four or five cars that I've done. So not that, you know, that's saying too much based on some of the other cars that I have driven, but as far as that goes, the ES300 is the best so far. And I think overall, it's gonna be hard to beat this car because of all that it has to offer, including automatic wipers, which I'm going to equip because it just started raining. I don't think I gave this car enough credit in the beginning because it's been consistently getting 42 to 43 MPG, and that's averaging about 79 miles per hour. So when you consider if you were going 70 to 72, whatever, you would probably hit that 44 that EPA estimates. So the fact that this car is able to still average well above 40 MPG while traveling at this speed, I mean, that's just excellent. So overall, I'm super pleased with this thing. And despite it being F-Sport handling, having different seats, having different dampers, it's still the Lexus ES that we know and love. It's comfortable, it's forgiving, and it's made to just eat up miles and I really don't have any complaints as far as sitting in this car for long distances and being comfortable, but my complaints with this stupid lane tracing assist system still stand. Um, it's very irritating and it just acts like it's drunk and it tries to drive you off the road. Otherwise though, it's been a really nice thing. So with that being said, that's gonna wrap it up for us today here on the 2023 Lexus ES300 Hybrid. I'm excited I finally got to go on another road trip. It's been a while, and it's also been a couple of weeks since I posted a video, so apologies for that. It's been just absolutely nuts, and I'm hoping that things are going to start to slow down a little bit here, uh, like the semi is doing to me. That's gonna wrap it up for us today. Thank you all so much for watching, and comment down below what you think I should road trip next, and also if there are any aspects that you think are missing from these road trip videos because they are certainly my most popular videos that go up on the channel. So I wanna make sure that you all are liking them and I'm open to any suggestions that you may have. So I'm gonna stop babbling. I'm gonna finish out my last two hours here and I'm gonna go home and go to bed. But again, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Take care.